a symptom of a failed state. Some of us who grew up after Uganda got our independence would be proud to say that we tested the fruit of freedom. We tested the fruit of independence. The British colonial era left us with everything a nation needs to survive on. We had it all. But we threw it all out because of our greediness, because we wanted more, because, our, because of our tribal differences. And that tribal differences made us to blue all, and we threw it out. We had proper schools. We had proper hospitals. We had small orders all around the country. We were drinking milk. We are having yogurt. We were enjoying everything that the child needs when growing up. We had cooperative union that was working proper. And we started using fake news to get the government in power out of power. And the fake news was going through the news media. Those days, we had Radio Katwe. And Radio Katwe was a mouthpiece of a group of people who wanted to make sure that the government in power didn't succeed. Dr. Apollo Milton Obote himself was married to a Uganda woman. And I couldn't imagine that the same passion would begin to talk nonsense about his own brothers in laws that you can't do it, and I won't even do it myself, because the brothers in laws are a part of me, and a part of who I am. But we dig deep into our own problem as Ugandans. Ah. Our leaders at that time, they didn't see it coming. They were all saying, we are brothers. You should not go against one another. We should not destroy one another. We should live together. Ah, that belief in the fact that we are brothers and sisters. 
Most of us who are growing up at that moment, we consider everybody in Uganda to be brothers and sisters. Everybody in Uganda to be a part of us. But we were wrong. And that difference is and those tribal belief and those lack of knowledge we have as people brought us down. But today, if you look back as a grown up person, you realize that you know, what is government? There were more Bagandas and Westerners than people from the North. They took all the position in the government. And if you compare it to the present government, you will find that Obote was a very generous man. He liked his people. Ugandans. He liked his Buseni. He liked people from Western Uganda a lot. And he liked people from Uganda a lot. Than his own people of Northern Uganda. Sometimes we don't realize what is happening to us until when you lose what you have, then you begin to learn. That things are not the same as they are. But today, if I look back to what we had when we got independent, as a child growing up, I have to be honest with you, the new Ugandans, that what we have was something that brought us together as Ugandans. Ah, Dr. Aplo Melton Obote, he did what he could and he did his best. But the fake news brought them down. I know. We tested the Pandagari saga. That is when you begin to realize as a child that what is really Pandagari is that a diversion from freedom? Is that a diversion from the taste of independence? Yes, it is. And it didn't take long. Before we started fighting one another as people. The Bagandas against the Northern, the Northerners against the Bagandas, the Acholi against the Langi and the Langis against the Acholi and the Lugwara against the Acholi and the Lugwaras against everybody. And I mean, came to power. You see, the symptom of a failed state start with corruption or crony corralling of resources. 
the expense of other groups. There are various factors that can contribute to a failed state. Failure in getting everything under control, corruption, torture. And when you begin to torture your own people, when you involve yourself in corruption, a non-effective government because you have failed to govern your own state, then you have crime being committed, violence from state police, military organs, and the military. You begin to see a number of forced displacement around the country. And when we got independent, there was no force displacement taking place anywhere in our country. And if you begin to see sectarians and ethnic conflicts, then you know that that is a symptom of a failed state. If you see and read about what had been going on in a part, ethnic conflicts, and then a state side with one side, then you know that that is a symptom of a failed state. When a state is or has been rendered ineffective and is not able to enforce its law uniformly or provide basic goods and services to its citizens without discrimination, then you realize that that is a symptom of the federal state. When you begin to witness extreme political corruption, which is taking place as I speak, bureaucracy, and when judicial system no longer serve the interests of a nation and its people, then you know the symptom of a failed state is inside. Those symptoms, when they appear, it means a state is on the way to become a failed state. And when it happens, the neighboring states 
are also likely when it happens the neighboring states are also likely to follow the same patterns and if you don't believe me then just look not far away from where you are your neighbors in southern Sudan our neighbors will also experience higher level of political instability. They started already in Southern Sudan. Unrest. And it is hard to prevent a civil war and interstate conflict. That is going to happen. The characteristic of weak state is when the trust in a state begins to fade away. When a state lacks social trust among its people, no more trust among communities, religious, tribal, leaders. Lack of trust is linked to lack of political, political cohesion and consensus, which is essential. To a functioning democracy. Sometimes we ask ourselves why do state fail? Government failure may arise from unanticipated consequences of a government intervention or because of insufficient outcome of handling issues that affect the people you rule. When the man site and supply don't smile with one another, then hell break out. And that is what is happening to our nations today. It is happening. You may not believe me as I speak, but that is happening. When we fail to build institution that is stronger than tribal loyalties or that could curb the power of warlords, then the house of cards begin to fall apart. And when the house of cards falls apart, then we are in real problem. A problem that we cannot escape. And that is happening now in Uganda. But most people are closing their eyes, pretending that nothing is happening. But the journey to a failed state 
started a long time ago, just waiting to reach its peak at any moment. As lawlessness spread and corrupts actors within the state, which is control over various parts of the country, then it means you are no longer in control of state affairs. That is when you begin to hear that police and military organs are working together with smugglers in order to get extra money because they can no longer depend on their salaries. The police, the army, accused of hating smugglers at the border in northern Uganda. That is when you know that you have lost control and those military organs are trying hard to bend the law in order to satisfy their own ego or make them survive for the day. The people can no longer come around with what they earn per month. And that leads to extra. Extra search for a way to top up what they earn so that they can stay alive, so that they can help their people, so that they can help their children, so that they can afford to keep their family going. The leaders in Amuro district sounded a drum about security personnel deployed at a Lego border. And these are the people, your own people. You have recruited them, you have employed them, and they are hating smugglers. Hating smugglers, clearing smugglers' goods from southern Sudan. And this is a disturbing development which tells us you have failed to control your soldiers. When security personnel taking advantage of the 10 kilometer border stretch from the border entry to Uganda. A border entry to the Onyama Bridge in Gulu district then it's a warning that just activities had been going on and is going on. And is going on, not only in the north, but the entire country.
We are here. Cases. Even at Entebbe Airport about corruption going on around the coronavirus. It is really disturbing that those who are supposed to be the highest of the state are the one aiding smugglers in illegal trade. Believe me, these are the symptoms of a failed state. And anybody in his right mind, anybody who loves Uganda, should be worried. The very people who are supposed to keep law and order turn smugglers. Allowing motorcycle smugglers carrying goods from southern Sudan to Hunter, Uganda illegally because they have the power of money that allowed them to bribe those poor souls, those soldiers, those police, those local defense forces. We all know, Mr. President, that you closed all borders and halted any business at the border, apart from cargo trucks, to reduce spread of coronavirus. And here we have your own soldiers, your own police, your own local defense forces, your own military, banning the law. Just to have a few dollars more. Disobeying your order as the commander in chief of the army, as the president of Uganda. And the only thing we hear that 16 people had been arrested, and that is where it ends because it's not going anywhere. And you're going to transfer them and put them somewhere else. This is really disturbing. If these people are disobeying your order, then it means there's something wrong in the system. The Achua River Regional Police Spokesperson acknowledge that there are some security personnel who have been bending the law and taking advantages of the situation to head smugglers. Tell me. You know, Mr. President, most of those guys, most of the people working with you today are corrupt. They are not respecting any words you say. What are you going to do about it? 
the symptoms of a failed state is emerging day by day. We are in a political body that is disintegrating to a point where basic conditions and responsibility of a government is no longer functioning properly. Especially when you hear that those super law enforcement are heading smugglers. Now I begin to understand police and military brutality that is taking place in Uganda that is being used on innocent people. They are showing us their inability to interact with locals. This is why they are aggressively beating up people, but they don't dare touch the smugglers who pay the money. The system is broken. The system is corrupt to a point of no return, Mr. President. It is very painful to see this beautiful country of ours being unable to perform the two fundamental, func fundamental function of the state. We have felt, we have felt very miserably. If you cannot project your authority, on police and military organs, then we don't know where this country is going. You as the executive, you no longer function. Legislators and judiciary are all corrupt. And compromise. Bureaucracy is out of control. And armed forces, the military organs, have lost their capacity and professional independence. Education and health facilities are out of date and basic human right is being violated every day by the mad dogs that we could refer to them as Kiboko Squad. Mr. President, we have failed to provide our people the liberties they need, the fundamental human rights, and the road to a stable political system looks far away from reality. Let's be serious and watch the space. A total collapse of a state may come faster than what you think if you cannot correct the wrong being done to the people of Uganda then we wish you all the best I hope you wake up and take 
the responsibility to get rid now, the region's other nation that is in oh, the bad is Turkey. And the people here is trying to reassure the population in your own political party, in your own police, in your own, police, in your own military organs. Thank you for listening. I will be back. And don't forget to subscribe because I will be talking whether you like it or you don't. Thank you for listening.